It is eight minutes past two o'clock at Wyoming's Big Country, KTAK Radio. Eighty-eight one Rustler Radio. This is Regina, and I'll be with you here till nine o'clock this morning. Bringing you. You're listening to Z93, your source for the best mix. Good morning, KBOW's Chit Chat is next. Put your ears on. Joel and Mildred Ernst came to Wyoming shortly after World War II and put on a series of radio stations. Well, it wasn't an adventure for them. It was an area that did not have a radio station and people there couldn't get anything locally. And Joe always said that after the war was over, what he'd like to do was go out to Wyoming and build some radio stations. Joe was in World War II and he was a radio telephone operator during the war. He was stationed in Europe and he would run the shortwave radio units for some of the advanced corps in the uh, war effort. After the war was over, Joe was decommissioned and ended up in uh, California at one of the decommissioned points uh, near San Diego. But he noticed uh, that they were stockpiling a lot of that old war equipment. So he went to the base commander and wanted to know what they were going to do with those acres and acres of old equipment. He said after they got it back and stockpiled and cataloged, they were probably going to sell it. And he brought it all back to Thermopolis, Wyoming, opened up his first radio station by basically scavenging as much equipment as he could out of the uh, old war surplus equipment. And that was how these uh, radio stations got started here in Fremont County. The original studio and transmitter site was next to the bridge over the Big Wind River on the south entrance of Riverton. The log building is still there. They had the tower behind the building, that is north of the building, and dangled the ground radials off into the um, damp ground around the river to give them a better ground signal. That particular building held a studio. The rest of the building consisted of a small apartment. Whoever his station manager was, or whoever was working there at the time, he had a place for him to live. That uh, served two purposes. It had somebody at the site all the time, and he didn't have to pay much because he picked up your room and board. The merchants had only the newspapers to advertise in, and despite how great newspapers think they are, a radio station is quicker, more explicit, so they build it down there for profit. And it was an occasion. We're on the air. Riverton is out there. Put your ears on. I think it caught on pretty rapid. I wouldn't say instant. People were very interested in advertising and listening to the music and the advertisements and the programs and so forth. The typical early day broadcasting for the Riverton radio station was as an independent station at the time. Its programming consisted of something for everyone. During Saturday mornings, there were children's programs. Uh, there were syndicated entertainment programs for women in the afternoon. There were entertainment programs in the evening and lots and lots of music. The long playing record allowed Joe Ernst, for example, once he finished his morning shift, to put on an LP. And he knew he had 20 minutes to go downtown to Riverton, enter the post office, pick up the mail, and come back. There were two things that could go wrong. Um, one is that um, the record would stick and simply repeat itself indefinitely. Or the transmitter might go off the air. And in that case, uh, as with any radio station, when it goes off the air, it disappears. This, of course, was against FCC rules and regulations at the time, which required a licensed operator to be on site at all times. Mama was the boss, definitely. And she, she acted that way, and she was in control, always. Joe 
did what she told him to do. And uh, there was very little argument unless it dealt with the electronics and he knew it, his electronics well. When Mama said jump, he said, how high? So did I. My father bought this radio station, KVOW, in 1961. Actually, the call letters when he bought it were KRIW. But uh, it was a considerable sum of money for two young guys that uh, were uh, fresh, uh, basically, uh, out of the sporting goods business in Scotts Bluff, Wyoming, or Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. My father made an offer, and the part of that offer was we don't have a lot of money but we sure have a lot of uh, guts and are willing to put time and effort into it. Mrs. Ernst, who ran the books, wrote back a letter and said, well, we are interested in selling the radio station to you, but we'd prefer money and not guts. So, so that's kind of how the finances were handled in those days. Well, they were getting a little old. They sold the station so they could build a their dream of a TV station. You never know what technology is going to do. Uh, you know, 30 years ago, when I, if I had to envision what we have today, I would have never guessed it. You know, I mean, uh, when cassette tapes came along, we thought it can't get any better than this. If you look around, there's not a turntable in sight. It used to be that that was the only way to provide music. It was a, it was a lot more work, and it meant a lot more manpower needed. <laughs> New technology has, has forced us to take a look at the kind of programming we provide, and I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing that radio now uh, has to look locally in order to provide something different than the other, the other sources. Because of that technology, a number people can get their uh, music, news, information from a variety of sources. So what that has uh, led us to do is to try and keep these radio stations, and in particular KVOW, as local as we possibly can. Small town, hometown radio still has a niche because I think people rely on that local radio station for their local news, local programming, any talk shows, uh, local news that covers city council, county government, uh, police activities, fire activities, things of that nature they can't get anywhere else. We can actually stream everything out over the internet now. Uh, so, and we do that with a number of our games. There's, we'll broadcast what we broadcast are games. Uh, we'll be, we stream on our internet through our website at rivertonradio.com and then uh, someone who was, grew up in Riverton and is over maybe serving in Afghanistan can click on their computer and hear the ball game. So, and we do get feedback from people from all over the country that enjoy listening to that stuff. Uh, and so it's kind of nice to provide it that way as well. We can just reach anywhere, anytime. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You got news, you got the weather. It's got the soothing me uh, music, not Dolly Parton particularly. Was I, was I really love you, but I really love you. It's more like noise than music. But I can always turn the knob off. <laughs> 